Okay, so here's a couple of definitions. If this is an R, so if R is an x-intercept, then x minus R is a factor. In other words, we're talking about if we're given a bunch of x-intercepts and we want to find the polynomial that gave us those intercepts, then this is how we're going to do it. You always take x minus whatever the intercept is. Also in these questions, you'll see the phrase zeros in there. That doesn't mean the actual number zero. What it means is a zero, that's another word for an x-intercept. So when you see questions where they ask you for zeros, it means they're really saying those are the x-intercepts that they're giving you. They want you to come up with a polynomial. So that's what they want you to do for uh, a and b here. They want to form a degree three polynomial, which means that that power has, we we'll have to have an x to the third power somewhere in our answer, or at least the degrees have to add up to three. Let's do the first one. So the first one we have negative two, zero, and two. The formula for doing that is you need to do x minus r. So first what I'll do is I'll put f of x for, just to, just to name it, and you can name it uh, anything you want, but I'll put a y equals or f of x, something there to, uh, to name my polynomial. And then each of these, I'm going to put x minus in each of these. I'm putting x minus because the formula that we got to use is x minus whatever the x-intercept is. Here's the x-intercepts they gave you, negative 2, 0, and 2. I'm just going to put those in, these spaces, for each of those. So we have a negative, negative 2, and then a 0, and then a 2. So by putting these in right here, we can simplify and we get x minus 0 is x. I'll just put that one out front. Minus and minus, that's x plus 2, and then I have x minus 2. So to see and verify that it really is a degree 3, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to multiply that through. So f of x is going to be, I'm going to do the first two x times these two first. That's x plus 2, x minus 2. If you multiply those, that's difference of squares. You'll get x squared minus 4. Then we'll multiply that through by x. And we get x cubed minus 4x. So now you can see there that the highest power there would be 3, so it does meet the condition. It's considered a polynomial because we have all uh, positive integer exponents on that one. And if we were to, to factor back, set this equal to 0 and go backwards, uh, we would end up getting that it crosses at negative 2, 0, and 2. So that would answer the first question, part A. Let's take a look at part B. So if we do it the same way, we do f of x equals and then again you always do x minus whatever the zero or the x-intercept is that you're given and then we put in negative three and then I put in a one and so if I simplify it then you get x plus three and x minus one. So that we have a problem with this one. The problem is if I multiply this out I'm only going to get x squared. I want to get a third power out of that. So we have to modify this somehow in order to get a power of 3. Okay, well, you can, you can do that one of two ways. I can put a, a 2 on this one, or here's another answer I have. f of x could be x plus 3, x minus 1. I could put the square on the second one. So I could write my answer either way, either the first one with the square here or the second one with a the square there. Now, the reason, now why, why do we have to put the 2 on there? Okay, well, there's a 1 here. So if I multiply this part out, I'm not going to multiply all of it out, but if, if you did, you would get an x squared term in there. And then if you multiply it by the x here, that would give you an additional power of 1. So when you multiply that together, you would get x cubed. Same thing here. This would give you a square on that one. You'd multiply by x. That would give you another one as well. So these powers that I have here, what we notice on that is when you have multiple things that give you these zeros, what you want to do is you want to make sure the powers on your factored pieces actually add up to your degree. So degree 3 means that we're going to have a 2 here and a 1 there, or a 1 here and a 2 there. These powers that are here, these actually have a name. That's called multiplicities. So if something asks you for multiplicities, it's asking you for the power that's on each of the factored pieces. So therefore, 
you would say something like this. You would say that negative 3 would have a multiplicity of 2 because that's the power that came from the section that gave us negative 3. The 1, that would have a multiplicity of 2 because that's where that particular uh, zero came from. It came from this one, and the power on that one is going to be 2. So again, these are going to become more important when we start getting into graphing. It's going to ask us to identify the multiplicities. That's what they are. And again, we had to put these numbers there because originally it told us that we need to have a degree 3 polynomial.